As solo and small firm lawyers, we are always looking for new ways to attract great clients. And in that search, sometimes we forget about the tried and true methods that have been around for a long time. Hi, I'm Sharon Christie, founder and CEO of Bold Women Lawyers and author of the Bold Women Lawyers Solo Success Guide. After more than 15 years in solo law practice, I've learned a lot about attracting great clients. And there are some simple things that you can do today to keep a steady flow of great clients coming into your law practice. And these are things that, that people have done for a long time and that won't break the bank, will not break your marketing budget. So let's talk about them. The first is birthday cards. You should be sending birthday cards to all of your current and former clients. Now, it's a nice gesture, but it also works to keep your name in front of your clients, past and present. Now, you would hope that your present clients, of course, remember your name, but you know those clients that you served two, three, four, five, ten 10 years ago, Maybe not so much. They may remember that they were represented by a great lawyer and they'd really like to refer work, but ugh, they can't think of your name. So something simple, very simple, like a birthday card, helps to keep your name in front of them. It's not hard to do. It's not expensive to do. There are even services that you can use that will send the cards out for you. And I will tell you, you will be surprised by the number of phone calls or emails that you get from both current and former clients to thank you for thinking of them. And I am always touched by the clients who contact me, not only to thank me, but to tell me that mine was the only card that they got on their birthday. Now, I know right now e-cards are big and everybody sends them or they send a message on Facebook, you know, wishing people a happy birthday. And that's great. But there really is still something very special about getting a card in the mail that's addressed just to you and that only you get to see and that expresses uh, happy wishes to you. So. I highly recommend it. I can tell you that your clients will be touched and they will remember you. And most importantly, they will tell their friends about you. So that's one thing you can do today. You can start sending those cards out today. The second thing that we all know about is social media. Now, you, you wanna make sure you know how to use social media. You want to use it to educate your potential clients about you and your area of practice. The first thing you have to know is where does your ideal client hang out on social media? Is it LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and on and on and on. And those platforms are different in terms of where the ideal clients are, it's different for every area of practice. Uh, as a social security disability lawyer, for example, I found that Facebook was very helpful and YouTube, very helpful. But that may or, not be, may or may not be where your ideal clients are hanging out. So do a little research. And how do you do that? You ask your current great clients, what social media platforms do they like? What do they use? And that will help you to narrow down where you're going to focus your attention. Now, once you know where your ideal clients are likely to be, then you know what do you do to get in front of them? You provide information, you educate. Start answering people's questions. So for example, if you're in a Facebook group, that uh, a lot of your ideal clients uh, are in and participate in, and people ask questions, answer the questions. Give them the information that they need. Provide information that addresses the questions that you get all the time from your current clients. 
What are the frequently asked questions? Provide that information because you know that's what people are thinking. That's what people are wondering about. You know that because that's exactly what your current clients are asking you. So the content that you can provide is pretty easy to figure out because you just look at the information you currently provide to your current clients. You just want to get it out there in front of a different group. And that way, the people that you're providing the information to get to know you, they get to like you, and most importantly, they get to trust you because you're providing them with a lot of great information. So when the time comes that they are ready to hire a lawyer, who will they call? Well, likely it will be you because they already feel like they know you because they've had interactions with you through social networking. The third way to attract new clients that you can start right away is being a vendor. Now, when I say that, please don't run screaming from your room because I am not talking about hawking your services at the state fair or at the carnival when it comes to town. That's not what I'm talking about at all. I'm talking about being a vendor at meetings of professionals who are in front of your ideal clients. And all the professional groups have annual meetings. Frequently, they also have a semi-annual meeting and they certainly have room for vendors. So let me give you an example. I'm a disability lawyer. Twice a year, I'm a vendor for the state social worker organization at their mid-year and their annual meeting. And why am I doing that? And what am I doing? Well, first of all, I'm doing it because many social workers are involved in discharge planning at hospitals and rehabilitation centers, and they work with people that they know need disability benefits. And many other social workers are clinical mental health service providers, and they are dealing directly one-on-one -on -one with clients who have mental health issues and they know which of those clients need disability benefits. So they are in front of many of my ideal clients. And what am I doing at, the, uh, at these meetings? Well, I'm a vendor, I have a table, I provide a ton of educational material. I have a booklet, people can sign up to get that. And when they sign up, I ask for their email address and ask for their permission to provide additional educational material to them. I send them a copy of my booklet. I always offer to do in-service for their staff. And when I go, go to do an in-service program, I always bring lots of extra booklets because the booklet is very educational about the social security disability process, but it also has my name, phone number, and email on it. And I bring extras for the people who couldn't attend the in-service and for the people who are there and the people who couldn't attend to give to their clients. So that way I'm getting not only in front of the potential referral sources, but also to their clients uh, directly through the, through the booklets and uh, get a ton of referrals from doing that. So what you wanna do is simply sit down, make a list of the types of professionals who frequently deal with your ideal clients, and then just do a little research, find out what are their professional organizations? How often do they meet? What is your ability to be a sponsor or to be a vendor, to be able to provide information? And I found that this is not expensive. Um, I think for each uh, meeting that I attend for the social workers, that I attend for a vendor, it's about $500 uh, for each event. And trust me, I get way more than $500 worth of clients uh, from being a participant. So those are some three tried and true methods to bring in new clients to your firm. And these are methods that are not gonna break your marketing bank and you can start implementing them today. So get started, don't wait, start today, send a birthday card. Now, there's several other key factors to having a successful solo law practice. If you're ready for a thriving six-figure plus practice, 
without sacrificing your sanity or your soul, go to my website, boldwomenlawyers.com and download my solo practice success guide. In the guide, you will learn lots of things. Uh, for example, why women, women lawyers have difficulty engaging the next client and the problems that will create for you. The steps I took to set up a system to bring in a steady stream of ideal clients to my law practice and how you can do the same thing and how to free yourself from all of the administrative work that is extremely important to keep your law firm running, but that you should not be doing and how you can manage to break free from that and free up the time that you need to grow your practice. Now, if you already know, you are ready to go deeper right now to evaluate your practice and to learn how to solve your biggest problems, then a law practice intensive may be exactly what you need. Go to my website, boldwomenlawyers.com, book a discovery call for me. Let's talk about how we might be able to work together to develop the practice of your dreams. I hope you enjoyed this video and be sure to come back next week for another practice tip.